We're going to talk a little bit about Remedy 9 today, both upgrading and even why you would want to upgrade in the first place. I know some of you are probably pretty happy right where you're at. You might be running a 7604 system, an 8102 system, and it does pretty much what you need it to do. So you're wondering why is BMC and their partners knocking on your door and asking you to upgrade to 9? Well, as you saw from Matt's and I pictures on that first slide, you know we're smart, beautiful, and powerful. But so is the system we're going to try to get you to use. And we have some really sound, sound reasons for doing this. And they really represent a new BMC and product directions that we have. And a lot of it comes from listening to all the folks on the phone who are our customers who've given us feedback over the years about how they would like the system to work and what they think a really new cutting edge IT service management world would look like. And a lot of that has to do with the following types of things. When we looked around and we took a look at the way the world was changing and how people like to interoperate with things like their IT department, or really with any service provider, you can see it right in the middle of the screen. This mobile device that we all carry around with us all the time right, is one of the principal means to have people reach out and communicate with us. And they're not using it as a phone, folks. They're using it as a portal. Right? We're using an application that's simple, right? that's very intuitive, and it combines a lot of the features that we have or show on the screen. What about being able to get self-help by crowdsourcing knowledge by all the other members of my organization, making it readily available to me in a simple way to look at it? Why not be more productive? Right? Why not work smarter? So one of the ways we do that was our introduction to smart reporting that came along with version 9 of this product. Right? And why did we go to smart reporting? It was a combination of factors. It wasn't that our previous reporting framework was somehow unusable or was not powerful enough. It was extremely powerful. However, what it wasn't was as simple to use as we want the paradigm to be for everyone who's using our software moving forward. We also wanted to have absolute better ability to self-service generate a report, and to add some features in there about social and collaboration within the context of the reporting engine itself. We also wanted to populate it with usable content out of the box that was meaningful, meaningful to people based on the role they have in the organization. So we want to have key performance indicators, persona-based dashboards, and a lot of operational reports metrics that are useful immediately on installation of the product. So let's take a look at smart reporting itself, and we can see that we've hit that objective. So what I'm looking at right now is simply an incident dashboard, and it's consolidating a lot of information that's important to someone like an incident manager in my environment. And these are very live objects. I can drill down into them to get greater detail. I just drilled from a top organizational layer into a set of groups and can drill farther into a set of support groups that are involved and drill farther into individual analysts and get an idea of what they're up to on my service desk and how they're performing, how their information and work trends over time. Very simple to just reset that to the other view. I can look back down at an incident submission trend that I'm capturing and easily manipulate this. I can take the sliders and move this information across if I wanted to reduce the uh, size of the metric I'm here on per day over across a series of years. Right? I can remove that slider right back to where it was. I can change this from days to say months for how I want to analyze that data. Very quickly and easily interact with this dashboard in a way that allows me to get a handle on the information. How is this process performing? Right? Quickly understand things like incidents by the service they're registered against so I can see where's the biggest workload coming from. Is there a service that's more problematic than I think it should be at this point? There's a lot of incidents registered against it. And I want to be able to see and ascertain that information immediately. And even have the ability to drill further down into this. Take things like my cross-tab breakout of all of my support technicians. I have Alan Albrook. He might have nine high-level uh, incidents assigned to him. Uh, and, and I want to know what they are. I can simply click into the cross-tab, get a list of those incidents, and even cross-launch them directly in context. Right? 
So I could just that immediately get to the actual incident itself, take a look at it, operate against it if I have to. If I'm an incident manager, I think this uh, particular text overloaded, I could reassign it immediately from here and figure out why does this guy have, 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 have nine incidents and what, what, what's really the state, what's going on in my organization. So those aspects of the product we've made and delivered out of the box, that's an out of the box dashboard. We have them for incident problem change, for service requests, et cetera, for all those main type of things that you're gonna be working with. But the features and functions go beyond that. I can look even farther into things like the individual timeline of a logged in user and see some interesting information. So what I'll get is basically everything I've been up to for a while and people can follow me and actually see what I'm doing. So if I'm someone who, who is responsible for a certain function within IT and I've self-service written reports or I've produced something that I think is interesting content, it can appear in my timeline. People who are following that can see the activities that I have. So there's four people actually following me on the system. So as I build a new report, they can see that this has occurred. I can enter into what we call discussions. So I can create and maintain topic areas that I share with other people. This one's about change management reporting. Other people can join this discussion, right? I can post, so let's say, draft reports of what I think would be important for people who are uh, part of the change management function. People can look at them in here. They can provide me feedback about it, whether it's useful to them or not. Subscribe to that report, all within the context of the reporting mechanism itself. Right? And that's good, but it's even easier to create a report for self-service. So I'm just going to create a simple incident report and for everyone who's watching, my real question at the end of the day will be whether this was easier than what you'd seen before. So here we are. We already have information about our incident available to us. So I can pull various incident details, like I want an incident ID. I'm just going to drag and drop it. The report will fresh itself with some sample data so we can make sure that what we dragged across actually has data in it and that it's what we expected it to be before we commit this report. So I'll pull a few of these fields. And this one I'll pull, which is a summation number of incidents. I'm going to use it in the next function, but I don't want it to actually appear in my report. So I am capable of taking it putting it on there so I'm consuming the data in the report, but hiding it from the output. So a handy feature. And I'm going to need that because I'm going to make a chart. So again, very simple to make a chart. I can take something like my horizontal axis and assign to group, my vertical axis, the number of incidents I have, and then provide some context to that by breaking that up by status. And now I've added an interesting bar chart that easily to my report. Now let's take a look at what that output would look like. And that would be the output of my report. Now what's interesting is this is drillable. Since I started with assign group, I can actually drill down from there to the individuals that are members of that group by the nature of how we built the information in this to begin with. So you didn't have to go build that drill down feature. We already built it for you. It's part of the nature of how we store the data. So it becomes that simple to create a report within Remedy Smart Reporting. I think if you've used any of our reporting capabilities in the past, you'd have to agree this is far easier, far user friendly, far more intuitive than anything we've ever produced. We've continued on those thoughts beyond just smart reporting. And we want to have just the job everyone's doing. They're working on the service desk if they're a change man or an asset manager. Somebody who's responsible for creating knowledge in an organization. If they work with that service management suite, we want to make a great experience for them that's simpler and easier to use than it's ever been before. And we really do that with smart IT. And smart IT is an alternate user interface to the mid-tier, and we actually give this away. 
right? Believe it or not, I don't charge you. If you're an existing customer and your support's current, you can get and use Smart IT. Right? So a lot of people ask, well, what does that really add? And I'm going to show you what it adds, but what it really adds, let me tell you a little bit about it first. What it adds is a simplified way of working with functionality we already had. And that'll be really clear when I give the demonstration. And we built this and it's really typical of how we're approaching the marketplace now is we didn't release Smart IT with every possible function in it when we dropped the first version of it. We focused on particular personas or roles that were important to our users. So in the first generation of Smart IT, we really focused on a service desk agent and a service desk manager, someone involved in that instant process. And then we slowly added roles. We added change management roles. We added asset roles. We added knowledge authorship roles, et cetera and we built it out over time. And the effect of this has been an enormous productivity increase by people who've adopted it. And we will see that part of the consumption of smart IT or what became central to that productivity increase was really adoption of, of, of knowledge management uh, and, and knowledge management frameworks like KCS or knowledge-centered support. And in fact, we've built direct support for a KCS process within Smart IT 1.4, because it's so central, we think, to how this is going to operate to make a service desk agent more efficient, how it's going to operate to make an end user provide themselves for self-service, that knowledge becomes kind of a central or core feature of what we're going to have moving forward. So obviously, with Smart IT, we wanted to make the creation of that knowledge as simple as we possibly could. And we wanted to make that accessibility, that knowledge available on any device you had, whether you're sitting at our, our universal client on a web browser at your desk, or you're out in the field with a mobile computing device like an iPad or an Android pad, or your phone. We want you to be able to access all that kind of information and do the same functions no matter what device you're on. And that kind of uh, carries on with even this idea of a guided creation of a change request one of the common complaints we have from customers is change is great, and it's really especially great for those people who are core users of it. It's not so great for the guy who submits a change maybe once or twice a year. And they went to the training we gave them, but they forgot everything. And maybe they have to go back to this user manual, look up stuff, and they don't quite get it right, and their change gets canceled, and they resubmit it. We took that feedback and we came up with a way to actually guide someone through the creation of a change request with Smart IT and make it very, very simple for them to do it the correct way for us. And then we wanted to take that idea of change management, the fact that we're obviously part and parcel of change is change approval processes that we put out there. We want to make that possibility of approving from anywhere. We have that capability native of approving via email. We want to extend this idea of being able to prove from smart IT, being able to prove from our my IT, our, our end user portal for, let's say, a line of business person that has a change approval that comes to them, and they're not a core IT user even. It's right to a my IT interface on their phone, they can approve from there. All right, so making it really possible to, to, to easily interoperate with the system. So let's take a little look at smart IT. So smart IT, and I'm just starting at a ticket console. Obviously, it's my interface as someone who's operating this. I'm going to look at a lot of tickets. But I'm going to take you to the first and major innovation we made when we came out with this product, and one that led to a tremendous amount of the productivity increases that we had. And there it is. It's a blank piece of paper. <laughs> 